that level. Make sure you can see my PlayStation logo because this is the play level podcast and I like to wear PlayStation stuff when I do a play level podcast. Blue Dev in the house. How are you doing today? Wait, wait, not yet. Not yet. Oh, man. The bulls are getting wrecked right now. I don't know what happened. <laughs> we are getting wrecked right now. I got some fun stories too. The first story of the day, it's a very fun one. You guys will enjoy the first story. I hope you enjoy all the stories, but the first one, After I finish this last bike, then I'll do my introduction. So when I put this on YouTube, they don't have to sit here and watch me eat. Oh, my teeth. Make sure I don't have food in my teeth. Talking to you guys, you won't tell me. You can't tell me. Well, you can. If you're watching, you'll type. You can see food in my teeth. But would you? I don't think you would because I think I've had teeth. I'm um, had teeth in my food. Oh, imagine that. Man. <laughs> imagine you go eat dinner and there's teeth in your food. Oh, come on, Pablo. Why do you say these things? No, but I've had food in my teeth, you know, after going, you know, I've eaten on stream and excuse me, then proceeded to stream. Once I'm done, I'll go wash my hands, you know. And I'll look in the mirror and I'll see food in my teeth. I'm like, and nobody send a message saying, Pablo, you got, I know I'm far away here, but let's say I go to this screen. I'm pretty close. I'm pretty close on this screen. So I go, you should see it. And I was eating like broccoli and stuff. So you definitely should have seen that. You should have seen that in my teeth. So no excuses, people. Help your boy out. I mean, come on. Be having me out here looking crazy with. I got broccoli pieces, broccoli wackly in my teeth. <laughs> anyway. Let's let's gather ourselves. Cause for some reason, I'm not I'm not stuffy, but I I'm mucusy right now. <laughs> so where I try to talk, like like it's hard to talk. I sound nasally, at least to me I do. <laughs> Sorry for these crazy noises in your ear. Need to drink. Okay, here we go. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Play Level Podcast. I am your host, Pablo Man Forty Four, and each and every Monday, sometimes Tuesday, doesn't happen, happen, doesn't happen often, hasn't happened in a while. But Monday or Tuesday, mostly Mondays. We come here, we nerd out about the latest video game releases, news, rumors, updates. We talk about the latest tech, if there's anything that's interesting. Um, There hasn't really been much interesting um, as far as tech goes, not not too much, but nothing, you know, nothing I want to talk about here. We talk about, you know, just a pinch of sports because I do love sports and my Chicago Bulls, except for tonight, are doing very well. Tonight we're just getting smashed, and I'm a Giants fan. So tonight we're playing Tampa Bay, um, my old state against my new state, but my my team still remains the same. I'm faithful to the Giants, so that's not going to change. Um, we're down 17-10 at half. I don't know where it's at now. 
but that's what it, that's what it was. Don't know what it is. Yep. Okay, we're losing that game. Twenty four ten. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we do this each and every Monday where we come out and, and I have we have some great stories to talk about. There's a lot of funny things happening in the games industry. You know, mostly we talk about TV shows, movies, and things like that as well. As long as they have some sort of connection to video games, because I'm a gamer. Sometimes I'll talk about outside things, but it's not very often, you know, because, you know, we're, we're gamers here, man. We love the stuff like, um, yeah, so that's what we do here at the play level podcast. And I'm excited. We're at another episode. This is 17 and, and we're keeping it rolling. We're keeping it rolling. Oh, righty. Oh, righty. Wait, what did, what just happened? Oh. So, how am I feeling today? How are you feeling today? Blue Dev, Dallas got rocked by the Chiefs, so you must not be feeling too well. I mean, the Bulls are getting rocked by the Pacers, which is making me want to vomit. Um, but it happens. The, you know, sometimes we vomit because things like that. <laughs> the Giants are now getting rocked. Well, I mean, it's a 14 point game, but still. What are the odds? You know, it's just I don't know when the Giants are going to get the team right. That can be like number one in the NFL. You know what I'm saying? We get a good quarterback, but we don't get a great quarterback. And it's OK to just have a good quarterback. As long as you have a great defense and a great offensive line and some great wide receivers at least one and one great you know back for running but we we don't have the proper combination of those things and it's annoying every year that that we fall like the way we fall like things happen the way they happen with us and it's like whatever so that's got me bummed out <laughs> But all good, man. Like I'm not stressing about, you know, I don't stress out about those things. You know, it is what it is, you know. But since Blue Dev doesn't want to share how he's feeling today, um, <laughs> I think we're going to move on from the feelings portion of the play level podcast. I like to check in, you know, we check in with those and it's not, it's not about your feelings all the time. Maybe, maybe there's something, you know, you want to share something cool happened or whatever, but it's a check-in. How you doing? And that's how I'm doing. I'm, I'm doing okay. I'm doing good. Um, my teams are disappointing me today, but you know, it's all good. The Bulls beat the Knicks yesterday, so. I'm going to ride that for a couple of days, even though we're losing today. You know, yesterday is what really matters. As long as we beat those New York Knicks, man. I've been a Bulls fan since I was a tiny, tiny tot. And I've hated the Knicks for a long time. Not because not because they were good and because we couldn't beat them or whatever, because we beat them. They were just dirty. They always played dirty. And I hated their jerseys and the colors and their name, the Knickerbockers. Like, why is it the Knickerbockers? Like, I probably would have been a New York basketball fan growing up. First of all, had I not seen Michael Jordan play against the Knicks that day, that was the first game I saw on TV um, was a Bulls and Knicks game. Ironically, that's fun. And the Bulls won. But at least, you know, upon further investigation of what this basketball thing was, you know, I picked the red team. And then when I researched the red team and started looking at the red team when they played, you know, I wanted to see that team play again. It had Jordan on it and Jordan was cooking. But I could have, you know, been like, you know, Michael Jordan, he's great. I, I love him. But, you know, we live in New York. I'm a Giants fan. I'm a Yankees fan. I don't live in New York anymore, but I'm saying at the time, I could have been like, you know, I like the New York team, but they're called the Knickerbockers, right? 
I hated the orange and blue. I thought it was the ugliest co color combination you can come up with. The jerseys to me were boring and ugly. And they played dirty. So I'm like, yep, Bulls it is. <laughs> Bulls it is. Now, we, we weren't winning championships in 1987 or 88 or 89 or 90. You know, it was 91. 92 and 93, you know. 96, 97, 98, you know. <laughs> and there were all banners on my wall right there. But, you know. You know what I mean? <laughs> I was a fan, so. But, you know, it's like with the Mets. Like, I chose the Yankees because they were good when I started watching baseball. You know, my grandfather liked the Yankees. So I went with the Yankees. And when I looked at the Mets, I saw the same ugly colors that the Knicks had. And I said, oh, no. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> so that that was my justification. And that was my rationalization. And that's what I went with. You know? So it is what it is. You know, you can... You can hate all you want and get mad all you want, but that's that was the reality of it. You know. And when it came to hockey, um I wanted to I liked hockey. And I, and I liked the hockey video game, so I tried to watch a little hockey, but I couldn't sit and watch a whole hockey match. It just you know, I just never was able to sit through a whole hockey match. But I did like it. You know, enough that I claimed a couple of teams. I never sat and said, I'm a Rangers fan. Um, and like was like dedicated because I didn't watch it enough to even, you know. And like we, when we were doing good, I was rooting for us. I'm like, yes, Rangers are doing great. But I still was like, you know, I like the Bulls. So maybe I can like the Chicago Blackhawks. You know, so I, I kind of did that back and forth between the Rangers and the Blackhawks, you know, and now I don't, I don't watch hockey at all anymore. Does anybody I'm, no disrespect? I'm just saying, like, well, it's fun for video games. Hockey is always fun for video games, but I don't know if I could sit and watch hockey and I like their jerseys most of the time. And I think they did improve on the quality of how it looks when you wear it to where it doesn't look kind of goofy because it did kind of look goofy at some points, but you know, they improved. But anyway, that's enough for the check in. What have we been playing this past week? Oh, I can talk about what I've been playing this past week. And what I will be playing tomorrow, like a madman, is Genshin Impact. Because I need to get my um, my level up to 24 before the tw um, up to 20, my um, adventure level up to 20 before the 24th, which is Wednesday, so that I can get um, Aloy. I thought I had to get the level up to 20 and then when it said adventure i was like oh that's right that's the one that goes up very slow so now i'm working on that trying to get my adventure level up to 20 um i think it's at 10 now but i didn't you know i wasn't like working on that so now i'm gonna actively work on it i think it's gonna go up quick i needed to go up quick before you know by to by tomorrow so that i can make sure i get um aloy yeah, man, you need to get back into Genshin Impact. I heard I, it says something about co-op. Is there a co-op mode? Like, can we play together? I didn't. I didn't even look into that. But I see, like, in some of the items that I have, it said um, for when you're in co-op mode and this blah blah blah. I'm like, is it co-op mode? I didn't know. 
So I got to look into that. But I've been playing that. And I jumped into Hitman a little bit. Hitman 2, actually. um, Because I've never finished Hitman 2 yet. So I need to finish Hitman 2. And um, because I want to play Hitman 3. I mean, I don't have to finish. Just being honest, because I don't think I finished Hitman 1. I'm not sure. But I don't think I did. I may have. I don't remember it, though. So might not have. Um, but, you know, I at least want to play more of it. I mean, it's fun. Like, I was having fun playing it, so. But I had to stop because, like I said, I want to grind on that Genshin Impact right now. I got a mission. I want to have Aloy because I want to be able to play with Aloy in that game. True. So, and I hope all this work that I'm doing, you know, at the end, I do get Aloy. Because it said before 2.3 comes out and we're at 2.2, um, that if I, um, that if I get my adventurer rank up to, sorry, I just got to plug, plug in my tablet here. That if I get my adventurer rank up to 20, then um, I'll receive, you know, her in my in my mailbox, in game mailbox, in the game mail. So so that's my goal. That's my focus on as far as that game goes. And we've been playing, you know, Silent Hill on stream. Wednesday and Thursday. I mean, Wednesday and Friday. Um, this week, though, no Silent Hill Wednesday. But Silent Hill Friday. I am I have decided I'm going to do backlog on Wednesday. And, you know, Friday night, Fright Night for Silent Hill on Friday nights. And I'm still deliberating if and when I'm adding another day. And what I'm going to do exactly on that day. So stay tuned for that that's that's something that's in the works that i'm thinking about and it may come up soon so but yeah so yeah that's what i've been playing and you've been playing 2k22 and you want to get back into genshin impact get into it man like let's let's figure out if we can do that um adventure that um adventure that's on my mind that's all that's on my mind getting my adventure level up to 20. the co-op mode and what that is about you know if that's like you can join me and i can join you and then in the game as it's played and run around and do the things that we do in the game together that'd be awesome because that game is really fun i've been having a lot of fun playing that game so shout out to the devs of genshin, genshin impact you know, and they made me they made me go through this whole um <laughs> like uh what is it survey whatever I didn't know it was as long as it was gonna be as long as it was but you know I went through it you know they asked you know questions like what games you play you know what kinds what genres and they named a bunch of games they want you to check off do you play this and blah blah, blah stuff like that they asked did you ever hear of the company before the games and no I didn't. Unfortunately for them, I haven't. But now I know about them, so that's all that matters. Will I play another one of their games? Um, I don't think it's one of one of the stories, but I read that there's supposed to be a survival horror game that that company is working on. I think it's that. I think it's that company. I may be wrong. Could be another company. Nonetheless, you know, maybe I'll play something else that they have. If it's if it's good as long as it's not a puzzle game because i know they got mobile stuff i don't like those mobile puzzle games i don't want to play candy crush with like a, a twist i don't i don't want to so don't give me that <laughs> anyway let's move forward let's get to these stories i got here we go to the number one story not not the top story but it's definitely a fun story this is the number one story let's get into this a tweet 
by Hassan Karaman. Those of you who don't know who Hassan Karaman is, all right, he is the founder of Blue Box Game Studios. Didn't think we were going to go down this rabbit hole again, not at least not anytime soon, or maybe ever, because they just disappeared. Because we talked about this, you know, a couple of streams ago, maybe even last stream, where they didn't do anything on social media or with the app on the PlayStation or anything. Excuse me. Since that initial, and then I think like early October or something, they did like tweet something or mid October, they did tweet something really weird and had nothing to do with nothing. So we got no game update since like August, I think it was when it came out the, um, the little four second clip that they had tweeted out first. And then that was their big reveal. And then they gave all these excuses or whatever, whatever it was, it was, it's been a long time now. We haven't heard Jack from them. This guy, the founder of this blue box game studios who, uh, you know, we, we all know my conspiracy and I share that conspiracy theory with a bunch of people comes in tweets, meet our motion capture stunts performer with the XD, which is, I guess it's supposed to be a, a funny face or whatever. It's the way of, you know, typing a face. I think he did it wrong unless he called the bear XD. I don't know. A cute teddy bear behind the screens, a human character in game. Disclaimer, no teddy bears were harmed. So I had gotten a picture from, you know, scrolling around the internet, you know, days before this about this, seeing this teddy bear and it had nothing to do with blue box or Hassan Karama. So then I scroll down looking at the comments and reactions. Oh, OP gamer tweeted and replied. This is totally normal and not something weird or secretive that a well-known game director with the initials of HK would tweet with a Hideo Kojima picture of him, you know, smirking like <laughs> I know something you don't. Though it's unrelated, the picture that was about something else. There's a Metal Gear Solid, you know, in the background. You see, you see, that's a Metal Gear Solid poster in his background. But he comes and tweets this because this is what I saw before. This is part of what I saw before. Oh, and that floor you see here, totally not similar to the one that's in Kojima's latest tweet. And that's what rang the bell to me because it is totally like the same floor. If it's different, it's mildly different. You know what I'm saying? It's mildly different. I don't want to click over just in case. Okay. You know? So I'm sitting here like looking at this floor and you can see differences. But you see the similarity and they're tweeting and they're tweeting and, you know, people are rolling back into this whole story, this whole conspiracy, just like me. And Tex Mex Morty, this is how I feel. He says, darn it, you keep claiming you don't have anything to do with Kojima, but post stuff around the time he does and stuff that could be seen as correlating and don't want people to run with it. If you really don't have anything, anything to do with Kojima, why do it? And then at Deadly 1X, I don't like your name because like what? Xbox 1X? It's deadly because it'll explode and destroy your house. You should have bought a PlayStation. Well, I don't want to tweet. I didn't press that button. They reply with what confuses me is the fact that you disappeared for a long time. 
Like I said, it's months. Like it's been a while. Then you posted this in the same day as Kojima tweet about the new game he's working on. And then there's a bunch of other stuff that's, you know, people are just like, come on, man, just to stop faking the funk. Like, stop lying to us. You are this thing. Let's look at Blue Box Game Studios. Was there a tweet from Blue Box Game Studios? No. Like I said, October 17th, middle of October was the last time they tweeted. And before that, it was September 1st. So September 1st to October 17th, nothing. October 17th, they tweet about that. You know, it's kind of like sob story, a message from us human beings, you know, that they begin. They, they were getting death threats and stuff. And they want people to stop. You know, I get that part, but there was no tweet from September 1st until then, October 17th. And it almost feels like was anybody really sending death threats? Was anybody really paying any more attention to them? I don't think anybody was. So I think that this tweet here about the death threats was just a. Oh, wait, don't forget about us. Ooh, I know where to get their attention. Let's say that people send us death threats. There's no way that we can post these death threats. You know, we don't want Nobody ever has posted pictures of the threatening letters or emails or whatever. We don't have to prove it. And all the people that didn't do it will always assume that there is people that did do it, even though nobody did it. No one can ever prove that nobody did it unless they have access to their emails. Everyone who's connected to the company's email and the company's email to show that none of those kinds of emails were received by them. I mean, yeah, were received by them. So they can get away with saying something like that and it can be completely untrue. Like that never happened, but it's a good way, not in a good way. But it is effective, I should say, in getting people to talk about you again. Because people are going to be like, oh, man, Blue Box Game Studios. Oh, they're getting death threats, but it's going to start a conversation. They're getting death threats because nobody knows what is going on and they're being so cryptic and it feels like they're lying to us and people are getting frustrated. And it'll start the whole conversation again. And then people who weren't part of the conversation to begin with are going to be like, what do you mean? What happened with, with that game studio? Oh, you didn't hear about it? Boom, 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 boom. And now they're back in the conversation again. Problem was, and is with that theory, is that was October 17th. But fast forwarding to its... November 22nd, this tweet was posted on the 18th. So this was from October 17th to November 18th, no tweets until this tweet. You know what I'm saying? And Hassan Karaman tweeted nothing from October 11th on his. This was October 11th tweet about this girl with muscular dystrophy. And his next tweet is November 18th. That's a whole month and a week and nothing until then. And before October 11th, it was August 28th. So... You would think that there would be more activity if this was a real indie developer working on a real game that they needed people to want to play because they're indie, you know, and they got to try to make money, trying to make a name for themselves. 
but no they're not tweeting constantly they're not showing any footage or updates you would think after all this time they would have some kind of footage and updates to show but they don't and it's probably most definitely and it's my theory that is because they don't have a game to show they're just a fake company you know helping to push a fake game that's going to turn into a real game made by someone else that we've all been waiting for and it's not yet to be revealed yet because it's not time yet for it to be revealed because next month there's going to be some events for that to be revealed at you know and they were just this is just the developer's way of building up hype for the games you know somehow because if this is an indie developer man i would have expected way more i'm sorry um this is what we're working on this is how far we've gotten but none 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 of that has been happening like i said october 17th to november 18th that's how long it took in between tweets his personal october 11th to november 18th before november before the october 11th tweet there wasn't a tweet except from october august 28th you understand Before August 28th, it was August 9th, and that was about the release of the the teaser or whatever. And it, he's saying, don't be late. Just kidding. Content will be available on, <coughs> excuse me. I think he after that i think it was pushed back it was delayed they had technical difficulties <clears throat> i don't know man there's so much fishy about this whole company about everything man i'm looking in the background of his picture And it looks like like it's got like a green hue a green texture to it and i'm gonna reach <laughs> and say that hey maybe that is you know that's some metal gear solid kind of stuff in the you know with the green i don't <laughs> i don't know i'm trying to figure this out man i'm trying to find this out because this is weird man that kojima talks about he's doing you know he's working on a game he's got motion capture going on excuse me and the same game out of nowhere here comes hassan karaman talking about yeah we got this mocap you know performance with this teddy bear or whatever it's a teddy bear facing the ground let's Let's look deeper into this this picture of this teddy bear, man. Like, I don't know about this teddy bear. It's white, right? Is it? What is it wearing? What is that shirt it's wearing? Like, I don't get the shirt, like, or whatever that cloth is on it. Yeah, there's so much weird about this. I'm, I'm just gonna give it time. I know somebody's gonna say something about it. They're gonna break it down. But this had to be my first story because nothing from the August. I mean, from August, from October 17th, and now boom, this on the same day that Kojima tweeted about doing motion capture. Yeah, let's get the English version. And Kojima tweets all the time. You know what I'm saying? 
Like we look at Kojima his his tweet um history and he's tweeting all the time. You know? And he's a game developer and you know, though he's a he has a major company because he has heavy hitters in history or whatever. He is technically indie as well. Cause he got his own little company now. I mean it's not a little company, it's a big company, but you know. But it's like I'm trying to find the tweet. Oh, the Matrix comes out on 12-22. That's coming soon, baby. I'm excited for the Matrix. I'm looking forward to it. Trying to find... That's the 21st. So he tweets so much. And you would think that... Oh, wow. Nice. Nice controller. It's got like Skittles on it. <laughs> M&M's on the back. That does make me itch. I'm already itching. My skin is dry and it's bothering me right now. Um, But we're going to scroll down. And we're going to see if we can find that um oh that's that's bother that bothers me to look at hopefully there's nothing inappropriate as i scroll down because that's annoying all right here we at the 18th Oh, I see stuff on the 19th here too. You gotta keep keep going down. I see the 19th. And I wanna see his his tweet on his Twitter about doing the motion capture. I still don't see it. Oh here it is. Here it is. They doing the motion capture stuff. I'm trying to locate the bear. Is that the bear? You guys can't see it. I'm trying to locate the bear. But let me tell you what I don't understand is they're talking about the bear in, you know, in that, but a human in game, a bear in the camera, but a human in real, whatever they said, why would you use a bear? Like you can't motion capture a bear and then put a human character in it. That doesn't make any sense. So. There we go with the lies and the deception. What does it mean? Let's let's move on to the next story before we our heads explode trying to figure this out. <laughs> We're gonna get to the bottom of it. So this one I really love. The PlayStation Remote Play update adds dual sense support for Android devices. Thank you. Sony has released a new update for PS Remote Play, allowing players to use the DualSense controllers on devices running on Android 12 or later. Previously, the feature was only available on iOS devices, with Android limited to the previous DualShock 4 controller. 
This means that all supported devices, including iPhone and iPad, Android, Mac, and Windows PC now pair with the DualSense controller for remote play. New PS remote play update for Android Toy. Yeah, we just read that. I'm happy. Let's see this. The update also features new support for assorted features on the DualShock 4 controller. Namely, PS Remote Play will now support the controller's touchpad, motion sensor, rumble, and battery indicator features. It's important to note, however, that some or all of these PS Remote Play features may not be available on older operating systems such as Android 10. The PS Remote Play app allows players to stream games from their PS4 and PS5 consoles to any device be it a smartphone or computer. The feature was released for PC in 2016 and was initially a near exact copy of a similar function that existed on the PS Vita. Sony has since updated PS Remote Play and added the ability to stream PS5 games. You can even use the Remote Play app on your PS4 console to play your PS5. Interestingly, there was a survey going around back in 2020 that asked users how they felt if remote play came to nintendo switch as well as apple and android tvs among other questions the survey also gauged users interest in a possible slim portable version of the dualshock controller neither of these has yet to come to fruition however another lose news sony recently opened up the ps direct online store in the uk in addition to the already existing German PS Direct store, the company plans to expand its direct-to-consumer -to offering to the rest of Europe in the near future. The PS Direct store sells PS5 and DualSense controllers as well as other Sony hardware without the use of retail middleman, of a retail middleman. That's where I got my PlayStation 5 and accessories and what, whatnot, all that stuff straight from PlayStation Direct. So, nice. But... I love this because I tried to pair it up with it before and it wasn't working. I was like frustrated. I'm like, come on, <laughs> didn't work at all. Now it works. So now I'm, now I'm going to use it. I'm going to try it and use it. All right. So that's, that's awesome. So let's, let's go to the next story. Keeping it PlayStation. Sony's own patent for removable PS5 faceplates published, prompting speculation of first party faceplates and skins. This would be quite interesting. Because this will be what we're waiting for. Um, I wish the middle piece was swappable. Like the, the black band that goes around the middle. I don't know how you would take it off, though. Maybe they have a solution. You know, I don't want to put like a skin on it. I think I don't I don't think that look good. But, you know, anyway, Sony's patent for customizable faceplates for the PS5 consoles has finally been made public as noticed by Apatat. This has prompted speculation the console manufacturer may be considering making its own swappable faceplates and skins, which makes sense. It feels like that's the reason why they made it so accessible. The patent follows an, a year of issues with third-party manufacturers creating their own PS5 faceplates only to face legal action from Sony. The patent describes an ornamental design for a cover for an electronic device before displaying several diagrams showing the faceplates from different perspectives. To be fair, there's not a lot more you can do in a patent for a faceplate, but it does potentially suggest Sony may be considering manufacturing its own swappable faceplates. An official console te teardown video released a month before the PS5 became available to players shows just how easy it is to remove the covers and how simple it is to apply customized faceplates. In fact, you need to remove one side if you want to add storage to the SSD expansion slot. However, it could be merely a legal response to issues Sony has faced with third party manufacturers, which I thought about, too. And we know that they've been trying to, um, you know, sell fake faceplates, you know, third party ones and stuff. Um, and Sony shut that down and then, um, D brand made faceplates and Sony was like, we're going to sue you. One of the companies made one that doesn't have like it's rounded just like the the inside part of the console. So it like all fits like the same shape. And I'm like, 
nobody's gonna buy that that doesn't even look like the playstation anymore like nobody's gonna buy that like get that out of here i don't know why they did that they did that to try to um euro step away from <laughs> the the legal action but I, I think it was stupid nobody's gonna buy that so you know that's pretty cool if playstation does come out with their own face plates because then they won't be 60 bucks like the competition was selling at least i hope not you know i would see like a 30 dollar price point or 20 uh, 19.99 or 29.99 that's what i see them you know being priced at not 59.99 you know, not the 60 bucks or 80 bucks, whatever it was crazy amount that the other companies was trying to, you know, charge you. And they'll be they'll have better quality and they'll have the actual PlayStation sacred symbols and the PlayStation logo on it like the original one does. Which the, you know, the the bootleg. I'm going to say bootleg faceplates didn't. They were just plain. And one of them or a couple of them had, you know, whatever the company was, their own little logos and stuff on it, which, you know, you know, they were people was trying to say, oh, that's a nice touch. No, I own a Sony PlayStation 5. I don't want it to say some other company's name all over it. That is crazy. No, thank you. So anyway, I'm excited about this game. I really want this game. Sifu is releasing two weeks earlier than planned. That's always great. I love that. That's a win right there. That's a win because things keep getting pushed back nowadays, but for it to release two weeks earlier than it was planned, that's that's awesome. So now it launches February 8th next year. Kung Fu Brawler Sifu is releasing two weeks earlier than scheduled, now coming out on February 8th, 2022. Developer Slow Clap also revealed the new trailer showcasing the combat system and aging mechanic. The earlier release means that Sifu will not have to compete with other big name titles such as Horizon Forbidden West and Elden Ring or Destiny 2's new Witch Queen expansion, all of which are releasing at the end of February 2022. We are approaching Goldmaster on Sifu and are happy to announce that we're moving up the release by two weeks. Sifu will be released on February 8th. We know we just read that, which is awesome. The, now, the announcement comes just a few months after Slow Clap, without, um, Slow Clap announced earlier this summer that it would delay Sifu to early 2022. As with many delay games this year, the main culprit was the issue surrounding remote work during the pandemic. While Slow Clap community manager Felix Garzinski Garzinski Gar, Garzinski, I don't know, offered an apology. He assured fans that the team the team would strive to make the best game possible. Later, Slow Clap announced an official release date of February 22nd, 2022, alongside opening pre-orders. In addition to the new release date announcement, Slowclap also took the PlayStation blog to reveal some key film inspirations as well as explain some important gameplay mechanics. In Sifu, players will control a young martial arts student as they investigate the assassination of their family. Equipped with a magical pendant that resurrects them after death at the, at the cost of a year of aging, players will punch their way through seedy clubs and hideouts to find out the truth. Slow Clap explains that players will age according to the number of times they've died. The first death will age you one year, the second death two years, and so on. Additionally, players will also have access to shrines where they can add perks to help them in combat. Aging will also reduce your maximum health, but increase the strength of your attacks. Past a certain age, however, players will be unable to keep fighting and resulting in a game over. This will also result in the player losing all of their perks. Don't worry though, at the end of each chapter, the game will save your progress and allow you to try again with the age you had when you completed it. This means that players will be able to push themselves to do no death perfect runs without having to worry about starting from the very beginning. You can check out the official Sifu release date and combat trailer below. It sounds awesome. I will tell you this, 
is probably definitely easier than Returnal. And that's not me saying I don't like Returnal. I love Returnal. Returnal should have been nominated for Game of the Year. I see why it wasn't, because it's so hard, and I think people were just mad. The game is wonderful, but it's difficult, so I get it. So I'm I'm looking forward to early Sifu. Not seafood, Sifu. <laughs> Here we go. Psychological horror game Luto or Lato or Lato. I love to. I would love to. <laughs> to release for PS4, PS5 in 2022. Here we go. This is the this is the major impact that Hodim, oh, <laughs> Hideo Kojima, aka Hassan Karam, um, had on the game industry when he was about to do Silent Hills, but uh, come out with probably the best game of his career, the biggest game of his career. What would have catapulted him even further? Well, because Konami, you know, and they had issues, it didn't happen. But that teaser of a demo, trailer demo, playable trailer, PT, has inspired tons of games because it was just incredible. And games just wanted to be that. Here's another one. PT inspired psychological horror game Ludo or love to <laughs> will release sometime in 2022 for the ps4 and ps5 as well as pc via steam developer broken bird games announced the new release window alongside a new trailer which gives players a glimpse into what type of dangers they may face the indie horror title was showcased earlier this summer as part of sony interactive uh, interactive entertainment spain's playstation talents initiative developing ludo or love to is Spain-based indie outfit Broken Bird Games. As hinted in the last released trailer, Ludo, or La Two, puts players in the shoes of a man who cannot leave his home and features dark themes centered around grief and depression. I think it's La Two, because he would love to leave his home, but he can't. <laughs> Dad jokes all day. <laughs> What's the name of the game? Love to. Because this man would love to leave his home, but he can't. <laughs> all right, all right. I'll stop. I'll stop. <laughs> the worst part about hell is not the flames. It's the hopelessness. As tweeted by Broken Bird Games, the developers of Love to. <laughs> love to. <laughs> oh, wait, it's Ludo. I don't know. I don't know what it's for. Could be love to. I could be right. It's a psychological horror narrative experience that explores the grief of losing a loved one, the fear of the darkness that lurks behind anxiety and depression. It was out 2022 on PS5, PS4, and Steam. You know what that means? Suck it, Xbox. Suck it. That's a PlayStation exclusive, console exclusive game right there. Under the radar. I'm pretty sure it's going to be really good because if you ever played the evil inside, that game was really good. It was PT inspired and PT inspired games usually come out pretty good. So I'm looking forward to this. I'm going to keep an eye on this and I wonder if hollow is going to play this and I wonder if he'll get it early. Hmm. It just doesn't say when in 2022, but I'm definitely going to look out for this. While the last trailer didn't give us much to go off of, the new announcement gives us more details about La to Ludo's potential threats. Besides anxiety and depression being key factors, a cloaked figure looks to be haunting the protagonist in his own home. The dimly lit corridors are also vividly reminiscent of Hideo Kojima's shuttered, PS, um, shuttered PT demo. There's also a newly revealed desert environment as well as some interesting architecture and paintings that could hint at something more ancient so there's a steam page with it i'm not going to play the trailer but it's got some pictures 
so you definitely like get you know thrown into other environments but i think this like you know how these games do you know you go you walk through the door and then like or something happens a mirror or something and it takes you into like this other place that you're like oh where where am i now and like you're running around and things are happening and it has something to do with what's going on so i think that's what that is but it looks good it does look good so can we click a picture just want to see another picture there we go that's a nice oh there goes the cloak figure right there i don't know if you can see it it's a little shadow there yeah this looks pretty good the graphics look really good this is very well done i can't wait to try this out and see what this is like so looking forward to this game we got the ludo screenshot but all right so that comes out next year so we'll make sure we look out for ludo or allowed to here we got some stuff to talk about this is leading up to um our uh top story activision blizzard employees walk out after a new report says ceo bobby kotick knew about harassment allegations threatened to kill an assistant wow a new report in the wall street journal says that activision blizzard ceo bobby kotick knew about the sexual assault and abuse allegations at the company but hid them from investors and even faces some damning allegations himself, including a threat to have one of his assistants killed. Whoa, buddy. In response to the Wall Street Journal post, members of the A Better ABK Employee Coalition, a better ABK, a better ABK employee. Is it a better? What is the ABK for? Anyway, coalition at Activision Blizzard are staging a walkout today, cease, ceasing work and demanding that Kodak, along with Brian Bulato and Francis, or Francis Townsend, resign from the company. Ben Fritz, two colleagues and I spent months reporting on allegations of sexual misconduct at Activision and what CEO Bobby Kodak knew and did about them. I hope you'll read the story we just published. I'll also thread key findings. The Wall Street Journal story comes after months reporting on the allegations at Activision Blizzard, focusing a lot more on the Activision side, including issues at Call of Duty developers Sledgehammer and Treyarch. One anecdote talks about a woman who was raped in 2016 and 2017 by a male supervisor. Twice? After which the company reached out, reached an out of court settlement with the employee. Kodak failed to inform the board of directors of the alleged rapes or resulting settlement. Details regarding Jennifer O'Neill's recent promotion and subsequent resignation from Blizzard were also revealed. O'Neill reportedly sent an email <clears throat> shortly after her promotion to CEO lead at Blizzard, which itself was a result of the original California lawsuit earlier this year, which forced J. Allen Brack to resign, saying that she had a lack of faith in Act Activision Blizzard leadership. She recounted her own experiences with sexual harassment and tokenization at the company in years prior and also revealed that she was paid less than her male co-lead, Mike Ibarra. Yes, even after becoming co-lead following the lawsuit that alleged discrimination, O'Neill was reportedly paid less than her male counterpart in an equal leadership role. O'Neill left the company earlier this month, just after three months at Blizzard co-lead as Blizzard co-lead. CEO of Treyarch, Dan Bunting, was also named in the report. He was accused of sexually harassing a female employee in 2017. An internal invest investigation in 2019 recommended he be fired, but Kodak reportedly personally intervened to keep Bunting on. He was given counseling and allowed to remain. An Activision spokeswoman told WSJ, the Wall Street Journal, that an outside investigation in 2020 led the company to decide not to let Bunting go. But the Treyarch co-head reportedly left following the Wall Street Journal's recent 
inquiries into the matter. In addition to multiple other reports of discrimination and harassment, including 30 women in Activision Esports who alleged, who alleged harassment, assault, and exclusion, Kodak was shown to have a history of mistreating women. Back in, 20, in 2006, Kodak settled a dispute out of court after an assistant complained of harassment, including threatening in a voicemail to have her killed. The Activision spokeswoman said that Kodak had already apologized for this, obviously hyperbolic and inappropriate voicemail. The next year, Kodak was sued by a flight attendant on a private jet he co-owned. She had claimed that the pilot sexually harassed her, complained to the other unnamed co-owner, and was subsequently fired by Kodak. An arbitrator working on an action related to legal fees on that case cited under sworn testimony that Kodak told the flight attendant and her attorneys, I'm going to destroy you. Additionally, the Wall Street Journal report says that Activision Blizzard has received more than 500 reports since the California lawsuit was public. From current and former employees alleging a host of issues ranging from sexual assault, harassment, bullying, discrimination, and other issues. This is despite recent and ongoing assurances from Kodak that he aims to make Activision Blizzard a safe and equal place to work. Kodak also recently lowered his own salary. There has been a whirlwind response following the release of the Wall Street Journal report. Kodak issued a video to Activision Blizzard employees, as well as an official statement from Activision Blizzard regarding the article, stating that the article presents an inaccurate and misleading view of Kodak and the progress they say the company has made. Oh. All right, people are walking out. People are leaving. You talking about you? You was threatening to kill people. What? I mean, what? What else? Like, come on, son. Like, get him out of there. He's a, he's he's a CEO, but isn't there a board of investors that can, you know? Vote him out. Vote him out. Get him out. That's crazy. Next story. Related story. This same guy says that he would consider leaving if misconduct issues aren't fixed quickly. He's the issue. He's the issue. I don't, I don't even have to read this. Like we know, like they're going to talk about, you know, what we just talked about. And it's uh, he. He said he's not stepping down right now, but it would be a possibility possibility if the issues couldn't be fixed with speed. He's the issue. So he's got to stop. And he's got to get rid of the employees that, I mean, he's not going to stop, y'all. I mean, it's 2006. They're talking about there was, there was, you know, something with him. It's 2021. We're about to be in 2022. That'll be 16 years. This dude is not stopping. He is probably, there's probably was stuff before that. He's not going to stop. He needs, they need to, he needs to go. That's it. He's done, done. Like, get him out of there. Like, straight up. This will lead into the next story. Nintendo president joins Sony and Xbox in criticism of Activision Blizzard and Bobby Kotick. There was a story recently that Xbox was joining PlayStation and criticizing them. <clears throat> now Nintendo has joined. So it's the three forces. This is the top story of the day. The three biggest forces in gaming no PC, you're not. All right, shut up. I have a PC. It's okay, guys. Don't don't come at me. I have a decent one too. But we're talking about gaming as we've always known it. Consoles. All right, leave us alone. <laughs> Nintendo president joins Sony and Xbox. Nintendo, Sony, and Xbox have come together. The three powerhouses of gaming, console gaming. And they're coming against this nonsense. This guy, Bobby Kotick, is 
you know, going over there. Quickly after last week's Wall Street Journal report that Activision Blizzard CEO Bobby Kotick shielded abusers at the company from repercussions as well as mistreated women himself, the heads of both PlayStation and Xbox stepped up to criticize the publisher and its lacking responses to the allegations. Following Jim Ryan and Phil Spencer's internal emails to their respective companies, Fanbyte reports that Nintendo of America President Doug Bowser that is funny. Let's 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 get a let's get a. And his last name is Bowser, and he works for Nintendo. Also sent an internal email. He not only works for Nintendo, he is the president of Nintendo of America, and his name last name is Bowser. Boogie, boogie. Also sent an internal email on Friday, November nineteenth, that says he finds the reports distressing and disturbing. Bowser's email was reportedly sent to every employee at all levels of Nintendo of America, including the internal development studios. Bowser says that he has been following the latest developments with Activision Blizzard and the ongoing reports of sexual harassment and toxicity at the company. In addition to calling the reports distressing and disturbing, he says they run counter to my values as well as Nintendo's beliefs, values, and policies. Bowser expects the gaming industry and any partners of Nintendo to hold themselves to a high standard of an open and inclusive workplace. <laughs> Additionally, Bowser claims that Nintendo has been in contact with Activision and says that they have taken action and are assessing others. Fanbyte notes that the email doesn't offer any specificity, 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 any specific <laughs> specificity. I don't, is that the specificity? Is that is that how you say the word? Into the actions that have been taken or being considered. I'm sorry, it just doesn't sound right. When you specify specificity, 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 <laughs> it doesn't sound right. I'm sorry, whatever. <laughs> Bowser's email also mentions working through E3 organizers, the Entertainment Software Association, ESA, to strengthen stances on harassment and abuse in the workplace. Activision Blizzard and Nintendo are both members of the ESA, along with a number of other prominent publishers, and Bowser says they must hold its members to the highest standard. A report over the weekend said that Kodak is a considered step. Yeah, you know, we just read that. He ain't. He's just saying that. They need to get him out of here. Don't wait for him to step down. Get him out. That's ridiculous, yo. All this craziness. But it's, it's good to see that so that PlayStation, Xbox, and Nintendo, Sony, Microsoft, Nintendo, all have the same stance and all have, you know, voiced it. For us all to know that they don't tolerate any of that stuff that that's not and that more needs to be done things need to be done they don't like how it's going and things need to get done that's that's dope because this needs to get fixed and this needs to be old news soon because it's annoying <laughs> my suggestion is probably not gonna happen is take down all Activision Blizzard games off of your stores, off the PlayStation Store, off the Xbox, you know, whatever the store is called, you know, off the Nintendo Marketplace store or whatever it is. Take them all down, no matter what. Call the duties, all Activision and Blizzard games out of there. Just take them off and say, until you do something about it, we're not selling your games. Shut down the servers for these games. That'll put pressure on them. Because they're not going to want servers to be, because then people are going to move on. And they're going to play Battlefield 2042, which is Segway.
segue into the next story. <laughs> Battlefield 2042 becomes one of the worst rated games on Steam. One of the worst rated games on Steam. You had potential and then you just threw it away. You you didn't do what you should have done. And now you're seeing what happens when you just, you know, you don't do what you're supposed to have done. Less than a week after launch, Battle 2042 has entered the top 10 worst rated games on the Steam platform. Thousands of disgruntled players have been leaving negative reviews on Battlefield 2042's Steam store page, lambasting or lambasting both. I don't, I don't see that word um, at all. Both Dice and Electronic Arts for releasing the game in an unfinished state. Why is it? In, first of all, first of all. When did Battlefield 5 come out? Wasn't that their last game? Battlefield 5? I'm Googling it real quick. September 20, uh, September 4th, 2018. Oh, it came out November 20th, 2018. Three years ago. Right? That's three years now. Three years and two days. Three years and two days. How often does a Call of Duty come out? Like every year. Sometimes twice. We just got um, Cold War and now we got Vanguard. They had one job. Make Battlefield. Three years you had to do this. How was it still not finished upon release to where it's so broken that you're getting one of the worst reviews worst ratings on the steam platform people say it was they're, like they're leaving negative comments because it's an unfinished state you had three years meanwhile dice has been hard at work releasing patches and bug fixes for though it may take a little longer for all of the issues to be resolved According to Steam 250, Battlefield 2042 currently sits at ninth place in Steam's worst rated games list. It currently sits between Peter Molyneux's Goddess and Roller Coaster Tycoon World. <laughs> it's, it's, it's. I didn't know what the first game was. I don't know what that is, but I've heard of Roller Coaster Tycoon World, and I, that game is horrible. As of writing, over 32,000 users have left negative reviews. One popular review reads, This game is meant to sell, not play. They invested all of their efforts into things like pointless weather effects and completely unnecessary scale so they could use them as selling points instead of investing in gameplay. I could honestly go on, but I think the part that is the most disappointing thing about all of this is that this game was labeled as a love letter to fans before it was even revealed. Yet here they are ignoring feedback on what fans want. The remaining 10,000 players who left positive reviews, on the other hand, highlighted how Battlefield 2042 was playable, but required bug fixes. Some praise its portal game mode, which allows players to join maps and weapons from past Battlefield titles. Others recommended prospective buyers wait for a sale. As we noted in our official review, the launch of Battlefield 2042 has been affected by a host of bugs and balancing issues that will put other Battlefield launches to shame. Some bugs prevented players from reviving teammates, while others completely changed what weapon attachments would do. If it wasn't glitches ruining gameplay, then it was poor server performance, misaligned hitboxes, or excessive bullet deviation. Battlefield 2042 is available now on all platforms except for Nintendo Switch. Basically. You know. The current PlayStations and Xboxes and the previous PlayStations and Xboxes and PC. 
so i mean it is it is what it is man like they I, they already lost me when they said no campaign so should have put a campaign guys people would at least say you know what maybe it's just the online let's play a campaign and if you would have made an awesome campaign they would love you for it they'd be like well you know the campaign though is awesome so we'll play Warzone for the you know online but we'll play this campaign this campaign is awesome at least you know maybe you got less negative reviews you'd be in a better spot than in between roller coaster tycoon world and goddess so anyway next story project l is a new league of legends fighting game by riot games riot games revealed new information about its upcoming assist based league of legends fighting games titled project l in a new gameplay video originally teased back in 2019 senior director tom cannon gave fans an update about how project l will look and play including some in-depth character introductions additionally cannon revealed that project l is not planned to release in 2021 or 2022 and there is currently no confirmed release date or release platforms or price that sucks that's the part that sucks but the reason why you know i wanted to talk about this story is because i've been watching um arcane the league of legends um anime on netflix and it's awesome i really like it tom and at ponder reintroduced project l an assist based fighter set in the world of rune terror Yep, Riot X, Arcane. Arcane is an awesome show. You have to watch. Um. So yeah. Room, um, Project L is set in the world of Rune Terra and will feature various popular characters from the League of Legends franchise. As an assist-based fighting game, Project L will also allow players to have multiple characters at their disposal in a given game. In the introduction video, Tony and Tom Cannon explain how it will follow an easy-to-learn, hard-to-master mentality. Tom Cannon states that the wishes for characters in Project L to be easy to pick up, but still have opportunities for veteran players to enhance and create unique playstyles. In terms of characters, the trailer showed off some prominent faces and character designs. This includes Jinx, Echo, Ari, and Darius. Cannon states that the main priority in bringing these characters to Project L is keeping each character's unique abilities while adapting them for a fighting game. Furthermore, Tony Cannon reveals that Project L will use rollback netcode, one of the more popular and reliable ways to play online fighting games. In addition to this, online play will, will involve the use of the Riot Direct internal network. According to Cannon, this internal network is already in use for Riot's other games such as League of Legends and Valorant. Finally, Cannon also assures fans that Riot Games will continue to keep fans updated on the project's progress. To this, Cannon promises at least two updates coming sometime in 2022. He also knows that Project L is still currently in R&D and may be subject to change at a later date. So, if you haven't watched Arcane, the League of Legends um, on Netflix, the anime, um, you need to check it out. It's pretty good. I haven't finished it, but I've been watching it. It's pretty good. I like it. I am enjoying it. So yeah, that's that. Next story. This is a story I couldn't wait to talk about because um, I mentioned it, you know, in previous um, podcasts. But they showed gameplay, as you can see in the screen here. <clears throat> I'm not gonna play a trailer. Last time I tried to play a trailer for something. I got copyright strikes on my um, YouTube video when I posted it and I had to block out the trailer. All Well, all the trailers, that, the two trailers that I showed. But nonetheless, free to play fighter Multiverses features an ever expanding cast of characters and universes from beloved Warner Brothers franchises. We knew about that. They finally showed some gameplay of it and it looks, it looks pretty fun. It's standard. It looks like how Smash Brothers and um, What's the other one? Oh, why am I blanking on the game? Uh, Brawlhalla. There you go. How they look. Warner Brothers ha and how PlayStation All-Stars uh, All Battle Royale or PlayStation 
Yeah, I think PlayStation All Stars Battle Royale. Whatever. How that game looked as well. Warner Brothers has officially announced Multiverses, a free to play 2v2 platform fighter that is created from an ever expanding cast of iconic characters and legendary universes from Warner Brothers franchises. The game is heading to every new console <coughs> and the previous consoles, except for, again, the Switch. This doesn't make any sense. This is a game that could totally make it to Switch. Players can choose any combination of characters. I guess they don't want it because they have Smash. And maybe they didn't want to put it there because they have Smash. It's supposed to compete with Smash. Players can choose any combination of characters as they team up to save the multiverse from the opposing duo. Not only are the fighters drawn from Warner Brothers franchises, the arenas are as well. Batman's Batcave and Jake and Finn's Tree Fort are just two confirmed so far. A total of 13 characters have been announced for the roster already, each of which will have their own unique abilities and customizable perk loadout so players can combine abilities effectively. There will also be a variety of costumes for each, and perhaps most notably, they are all voiced by top tier and original voice talent. The roster so far is... Arya Stark, Game of Thrones, voiced by Maisie Williams. Batman, voiced by Kevin Conroy. Bugs Bunny, voiced by Eric Bowser, or Bowser. Finn the Human, Adventure Time, voiced by Jeremy Shadow. Garnett, Steven Universe, voiced by Estelle. Harley Quinn, Batman, voiced by Tara Strong. Jake the Dog, Adventure Time, voiced by John DiMaggio. Rain Dog, brand new character for multiverses. A brand new character. Why would you put a brand new character? You have all these different characters. That, that This is where it starts getting shaky. Because when you have to add brand new characters, when you're doing a multiverses and there's a whole lot of characters you can have, it starts feeling shaky. Like the game may not be that good. That's, that's, that's a shaky moment. Voiced by Andrew Frankel. Shaggy from Scooby-Doo, voiced by Matthew Lillard. Steven Universe, voiced by Daniel DeVenery, or DeVenerer. Superman, voiced by George Newbern. Tom and Jerry, voiced by Eric Bowser. He voiced um, Bugs Bunny as well. Wonder Woman, voiced by Abby Trot. As well as the main 2v2 co-op mode, there will be more intense 1v1 matches or free for all mode for up to four players. Those wanting to hone their skills can do so in the training mode, while the most practiced fighters will want to test their skill in ranked competitive mode. Players can even form guilds to compete against each other. Multiverses will include cross-platform play and cross-platform pro progression making it possible to play games anywhere and with anybody without losing your progress. Local co-op play is also supported alongside online matches with dedicated server-based rollback netcode. Developer Play First Games has confirmed more characters, stages, modes, in-game events, skins, and other content will be added post-launch. There will be in-game purchases, although these weren't detailed any further right now. Those already liking the sound of multiverses can sign up to join the playtest through the official website. I just might do that. I just might do that. But you know, the problem I have already is I click on this, right? I, I click on this and it's giving me Fortnite vibes. Why is everybody trying to Fortnite up their stuff? That also is a red flag. Gosh. Anyway. Move on to the next story before I lose my mind. Man Eater reaches 5 million players, celebrates milestone with ray tracing update. I have this downloaded. I haven't played it yet. But with the ray tracing download, I might check it out because that probably looks awesome. Tripwire Interactive Shark Arp Shark PG Shark PG Man Eater. I see what they tried to do there. I'll give you this. I'll give you the drum set <clears throat> has reached a new milestone of 5 million players and to celebrate a new update has been released adding ray tracing for PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X players. The update also improves stability and performance on all platforms. 
Wow, it's an action RPG. Five million players. That's pretty good. That's pretty good for a game like this. So congratulations and kudos to the developers for that. I'm not going to read much more into the story. I mean, this is very simple and yeah, they got ray tracing and the game has reached 5 million players. That's totally awesome. Both of those are awesome. Um, we're going to keep with the same vibe with the ray tracing and move on to the next story. Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy gets ray tracing on PS5 and Xbox Series X through latest update, which is awesome. Should have had it already, but I, it's all good. So then those people who played it went through it already, you know, you play without ray chasing. Now you got to do it again, which, you know, maybe an incentive to go through it again and, you know, earn some stuff that you didn't earn before. Maybe some trophies and whatnot. Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy received a new patch today that adds a ray tracing mode for the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X players. Other features added for all platforms include a save rollback feature and a variety of other bug fixes and gameplay improvements. The latest generation of consoles aren't the only ones to benefit from graphics upgrades. Those on PlayStation 4 get other performance improvements while Xbox Series S players get an uncapped frame rate option. There are also fixes for progress blockers in a fair number of campaign chapters and trophies that might not have unlocked. From a minor perspective, Star-Lord won't get glowing red eyes when ray tracing is enabled. The full patch notes are below. Oh, so wait, his eyes aren't gonna glow red? They gotta fix that. And here's the list of the, um, you know, as people see the Xbox series S isn't as strong as, you know, the series X and, you know, definitely not as strong as a PS five either. Um, it's more of a, uh, you know, Xbox one X, you know, competitor. You know, it just has some things that the One X could, you know, couldn't do because it's old and, you know, they didn't add it to it, but not a good value. I wouldn't go and buy a Series S if, you know, you're looking to get a the new Xbox console because not a good option, you know, not a good option. Anyway, so that's the story there. And for the last story zero chance of dying light 2 being delayed again says techland thank you playstation lifestyles chandler wood mentioned in his recent hands-on preview of dying light 2 stay human that despite delays and development snafus he feels pretty confident about the game's february 2022 release those who are worried about yet another delay can rest assured that there is zero chance Dying Light 2 will be delayed again. At least that's what developer Techland told MP First in a new interview. The game is going to be released next year in February, and that's what we focused on. That's what we've worked on. So absolutely zero chance of that a delay happening. Lead game designer Timon Smectala said when quizzed i don't know if i said that right i'm sorry if I'm, I'm butchering people's names when quizzed about the launch date he added that although the pandemic had a role to play in the delay it wasn't the main reason techland decided to push dying light 2's launch i think the most important reason for us is that when you work on a non-linear game and you want to polish that you're actually not polishing one game but a few games at the same time he continued because the same game can have so many variants and some of those variants can be so drastically different that you have to verify through playthrough not just 1000 times but 1000 times multiplied by the number of variations in the game he said that dying light 2 franchise is techland's baby and the studio wouldn't release it if it wasn't up to the mark I know that hearing about the delay is disappointing, but I think it's better than getting a game which wasn't meant to be released in the first place that wasn't ready to be released, he concluded. And that is shots at both CD Projekt Red and Cyberpunk, as well as 
this issue Battlefield and DICE is having right now. Shouldn't have dropped your games. They wasn't ready, y'all. They just wasn't ready. There's a there's a different and also they, they could be talking about um Grand Theft Auto's trilogy at and Rockstar over there. But you know, those are old games that were just remastered. Not the same thing, buddy. And I've been I've been playing um oh yeah, I forgot to say that. I've been playing Grand Theft Auto 3. And I was having fun. Like I've been having fun, so you know, I don't want to hear Jack about about that. This sounds stupid to me, but yeah, that's that's about it. Let me um, if I put this down, will it go away? No, it doesn't go away. It just goes away on my screen. So I'm going to have to look back into that multiverses thing. I'm going to look into that. Let's see if we can do that now. Let's see. Will it let me do an I play test? Okay. No, because you guys don't know how to mind your business. So let me just do that. There we go. And let's put the dead level intro back there. And let's do that. There we go. It's not like you don't know my birthday, but, you know, what if they ask me other stuff? Enter your email address. Sign me up. Select my region. I'm in the United States, of course, duh. Uh, definitely, definitely. Um, maybe. Um. Mm. Maybe. I can say that. Not that one either. Over forty hours. No. That's it. There we go. All right. So I signed up for the the play test. Let's see what happens. Let's see if I get to do the play test and I will, I will read their disclaimers and see if I get to stream it. If I do get part of it, that would be awesome to do the play test. But um, yeah, that concludes the podcast. Thank you guys for tuning in. We talked about some crazy stuff. We got back into the blue box. We got sucked right back into that rabbit hole. The whole blue box game studios and Hassan Karam and the abandoned stuff and how it seems like Silent Hill or Metal Gear stuff is connected to it. And they're doing weird stuff because, you know, he's definitely connected with Kojima somehow, but he's lying about not it, you know, not being connected to Kojima. His initials are exactly like Kojima's H and K, Hassan Karam and Hideo Kojima. He drops. He hasn't tweeted in, a, in a, over a month and he tweets the same day that Kojima tweets about motion capture that they're, you know, that they're working on, you know, he's working on some stuff, experiment with his team and they, and he tweets about motion capture and the floor looks the same. No, you seen black mirror. Don't play test. Shut up. <laughs> it's not going to be that kind of a play test. It's like a, a beta playing a part of the beta. It's, it's not like that. It's not going to be like that. When are they going to get more more um, episodes for that? Like, what the heck is wrong with them? Did, did they think that was it? They should have just did that and that's it? You said turn your phone off? <laughs> My phone turned itself off just now. <gasps> oh, no. Oh, no. My phone turned off. It turned off all by itself. <laughs> It did. It shouldn't have, but it did. But, but yeah. Um. So yeah, the whole blue box game studios thing is. Yeah, they they did. He didn't have to tweet that same day. He could have waited, or did it earlier. You know, out of nowhere, yo, like a whole month, and then you tweet when Kojima tweets, 
and then your tweet and the pictures in your tweet look like kind of like something in Kojima's tweet like it's fishy it's real fishy and if if they're not related then he's the biggest jerk and nobody's gonna buy his game because it's like he's doing it on purpose and he <clears throat> he's trying to he's trying to get people to want to buy his game but he's doing it all wrong uh, anyway anyway thank you for tuning in this week I never got to like I keep doing this like I mean just life is you know things happen you know but I'm gonna try to do it this time I didn't get last week's episode on my YouTube channel so I have it downloaded on my phone now so I'm gonna try to do it tonight I'm gonna try to do both tonight let's see what happens if not I'll do it tomorrow after I get off work um which is which has become preferable because on my computer I get all of my fonts that I like you know I downloaded some fonts onto my computer I don't have them all on my phone to do the um the thumbnail so I want to have the thumbnail ready and put on the video because I figured out how to do that now before the video finished posting so that when you see the video come up it'll have everything already ready it won't have you know just a generic <clears throat> You know thumbnail which is never good you know and it looks like you know i'm not as professional as i am with my videos you know i'm at least a little professional with my videos man but yeah um oh yeah quick update before i before i roll i know the bulls lost um i know the bulls got smashed by the Pacers. Um, yep, 32 points. Uh, the Bucks only won by 31. But we know that in garbage time, that, um, you know, at least the Magic put up 92 points. That's a 36 point fourth quarter. They won the fourth quarter 36 to 18. Um, which the Bulls held the Pacers to 20 in the fourth quarter, but only scored 16. It's like they took the night off. I feel like it. I feel like they took the night off because there's no way that they only scored 15, 16, and 16 in three quarters of this game. The second quarter, they scored 30. This is a powerhouse team right now. Like, they, they've been doing so well. Like, they took the night off or they were just drained and maybe emotionally and mentally drained from you know what happened the night before because it was frustrating that we got fouled so much we could have lost that game because of it um which, yeah but then the nets win so now the nets are back in first bulls keep the first keep number one spot like do something to keep the number one spot man let's see the standings now we're, we're back down to two um the heat also have six losses so you know, at least we stay at number two. Well, you know, right now. Our next game. Who the Bulls play next? We play the Rockets. We play the Rockets on on Wednesday. We better win that game. We better win that game. Because there's no way we should have lost to the to the Pacers, but you know, I don't think we would have lost this game tonight if we had Vucevic. Because that's a big thing. Like I said, it's a bonus on you said Heat and Bulls on Saturday. It said that. Oh wait, you can't you can't see my thing. Oh, it's not showing me all all those next games coming up. Let me see if I hit schedule. Stop scrolling away from me. Oh, so we play Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. Wednesday in Houston. Friday there in Orlando. Almost makes me feel like, you know, at 7 o'clock, buying some tickets. Buying some, like, $30 tickets and taking that drive to go see them play in Orlando. <laughs> 
It's right there. It's an hour, like an hour and 30 minutes, hour and 45 minutes. You know, I get off work early on Fridays. You know what I'm saying? I don't know how early I get off this Friday. I think my schedule on Friday this week is different than it normally is. I get off at two o'clock. So if I get up at two o'clock, get home, I take a shower, ready by two thirty, three o'clock. I take the drive. I can be there definitely on time. See the game, but then have to take that drive back. You know what I'm saying? That'll be dope, though. I'm not gonna do it, but that would be that. <laughs> you know, they're in in Chicago for the Miami game. Yeah, if they were in Miami, oh, and December 11th, we're in Miami. That's a, that's another game like I could drive to. Because it's like the same distance. I'm in between Orlando and Miami. So, like, it's like the same distance in driving. So, yeah, maybe December 11th. That's a Saturday. You know, get a set at 8 p.m. You know, get my schedule changed from from closing to maybe an opening that day or, you know, get the day off, take a drive, go see the Bulls play in Miami. You know what I'm saying? Drive back home that night. I don't, you know, I don't work the next day. So it'll be fine. You know what I'm saying? Be a nice drive. Go see a nice game. <laughs> December 11th. I'll consider it, you know. Maybe go watch the Bulls in the heat. And then in February, I'm in Chicago to see the Bulls and Sixers. Which I can't wait. And they play Phoenix the following night. I should have I should have bought I should have bought tickets for that one. But I figured it's a Monday. And you know, it's further away from my birthday. The closest game to my birthday in Chicago. How they play Orlando on February 1st. You know, but it's Orlando. I saw Philly. I was like, that's only 3 days after my birthday. So that's a that's that's a game right there to go watch. But yeah, um, what I, what else I wanted to see was the NFL and the Giants, and we lost to the Bucks thirty to ten. I knew it was gonna happen, yeah. Like I knew it was gonna happen, like. They're just not They just can't get it right And I don't understand this Anyway I'm done, I'm out I'll, I'll have the podcast up on my YouTube channel Um, I'm gonna push, man For tomorrow You know, both last week and this week's episode I'll put them up you know, one at one, you know, right after another. Maybe I'll um I'll set it for one to air tomorrow after I you know, right away when I post it and then one to air, you know, two days later or whatever. You know, but at the very least I'm gonna have them up this week. Both of them. I have to do it. I can't pile up three and have to put three. Cause then the stories don't even have the same feel. You know what I'm saying? So I, I got to fix that. But I'm out of here. Um, I'll catch you guys on Wednesday. Wednesday, don't know what I'm going to play, but I'm going to play something in my backlog. So, and it's Silent Hill on Friday. So Wednesday, we'll see what happens. We'll see what I'll play. I'll figure it out by then. Maybe we'll start Miles Morales. Maybe I'll start Miles Morales on Wednesday. Let's let's see. Let's see what happens. I always love playing Spider-Man games. Um, I had fun playing on stream. Those I'm very um 
engaging when playing those games. Like I, I, I definitely talk a lot. So <laughs> that'll be good. That'd be a good game to to do a live on stream. But anywho, anyhow, anyway, I'm out of here. This has been great. I'm your host, Pablo Man 44. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, comment, and do all that on my YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe. You like the videos. You comment on the videos. You share the videos. YouTube channel is the dad level. The intro is playing beneath me. So you'll see that the dad level on YouTube. When you see that logo, you know, you're in the right spot. Um, show me some love. What am I off? I am off Wednesday and Thursday. So I'm off um, Thanksgiving Eve and Thanksgiving. So, um, which is awesome because then, you know, get to play video games and do some live stream. Wednesday Genshin. We have to figure out if we can do that co-op. Like how that co-op works. If like my current playthrough can become co-op, like if we can play together in my current playthrough, because that would be awesome. But I'm definitely going to grind it tomorrow after work. Um... Because I'm like I said, I'm trying to get my um, adventure level up to 20 so that I can get Aloy. And I have to do that tomorrow by tomorrow because on Wednesday is the day they released the new patch. And from what I was reading, that's it. Like I won't be able to get Aloy. That will suck. I don't want that to happen. I'll reread it again. Maybe I'll take some pressure off myself, but I think that's what I read. So, but yeah, maybe, maybe we'll if if Genshin Impact's co-op mode is the same, like your your same game save, but you can play through it with your friends or whatever, you know, like like into a um like like how Breakpoint and stuff like that is, and GTA Online or whatever. Maybe GTA Online is a little different, but. If we got to start from the beginning, we can still do it. Just make a new file. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. So maybe we'll do that. If that's if that's even how, you know, it works, because it says something about co-op, but I didn't look into it. You know, hopefully it's not like, you know, local co-op where you would have to be here because that's a long drive. <laughs> well, anyway, I'm out of here. Thank you again. Make sure you follow me on TikTok. Um, at Pablo Man 44 underscore Twitch. Follow me on Instagram at Pablo Man 44 and follow me on Twitter at Pablo Man 44 and at the dad level. I have two Twitters and, um, you know, check me out there and get in touch with me there. Like, you can holler at me there. Leave me, leave me some comments, some, mess some messages, you know, some suggestions for maybe. You know, a stream because I want to do some food streams, some cooking streams because I've done a couple. Well, I've done one and a, and a quarter of one. I had to do one the other day before I stream because, um, of course, they don't care about me when it comes to dinner time. So I have to take care of myself. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah, um, you know, you can I always take suggestions Just you know, keep it, you know, keep it respectful. Um, and I'll see you guys on Wednesday. Let's see what happens with what we're going to play. Um, I'm out of here. And you'll see all my social media on the next screen in case you don't know where to find me. You'll see where you can type in, you know, what names, you know, you can find me on the social media. The different ones that I'm on. The ones I, I care about, you know, the most. Um, not giving you my Facebook. That doesn't make sense. You don't need to be on Facebook with me. So, <laughs> my business. I need some privacy, right? All right, I'm out of here. I'm Pablo Man 44. And as I always say, and I always sign off with, peace and love. Because there's too much craziness going on in this world. People threatening people's lives, taking people's lives. People harassing other people, sexually harassing other people, raping. And all kinds of craziness going on in this world that I don't understand. Racism, I don't understand why any of this is going on. Why anybody wants to do these things or be these things. Please stop. And let's show more peace and love. Don't worry about somebody's beliefs and their feelings. Keep your own feelings to yourself and in check. And don't impose them on other people because other people are not going to think the way you think and feel the way you feel and, you know, believe the same things you believe in. 
you know you can be passionate about your beliefs but as long as you're not trying to push it on anybody and that goes with my faith my christianity me being a follower of christ not even being religious i have a relationship with god i don't push it on people i let people know what god has done for me you know how i feel about it you know why i follow why i study the bible and how it's affected my life in such a positive way and how it's changed my outlook on life period like i don't stress about things like i used to or barely ever stress about things you know and you know i tell them you know you could have that same feeling too you know if you don't have that same kind of feeling you know i don't assume people aren't happy but you know i wasn't as happy as i you know ever in my life as i am now and it's not just because i live in a house but because i live in this house is because what god has done for me and my family and set us up and god is here so tell them if you don't have that kind of feeling and you want it you know maybe you should try you know little baby steps you know it won't hurt you it hasn't hurt not a single person only people hurt people people in their mess and their own individual um agendas that's why religion to me i don't like it i don't deal with religion because that's what people start bringing their own doctrines and things and start pushing people away from having that relationship with god that we all need to have so that's who i am that's how i am you know so i push peace and love stop with the fighting and arguing and all the hate and let's just have peace and love let's play some video games we all everybody enjoys video games and movies and stuff let's enjoy that stuff together let's just let's just enjoy this stuff that we have to enjoy together let's actually enjoy life we only get one life so let's enjoy it peace and love y'all i'm out